My name is Elise and this is my channel, The Crunchy Ginger, where we do tips and tricks and DIYs to help you live a little bit greener and save a little money. This one is gonna be a lifesaver or a hand saver. I don't know about you, but I've been doing an awful lot of working in my yard and my garden lately and my hands are taking a beating. That in addition to all of the extra hand washing we've all been doing lately. So I wanna show you how you can whip up your own super hand healing and nourishing calendula hand salve. We're gonna be making it out of a calendula infused coconut oil. If you don't already have one, I'm gonna show you quickly how you can make your own. So for this recipe, you're going to need some dried calendula flowers to infuse into your oil. These are ones that I harvested and dried from my garden last year. If you don't have calendula flowers just laying around, you can order some online. I'll put a link to some below um, so you can check that out. You also might be able to find it at your local health food store. Calendula is incredibly wonderful for skin. You'll often see it mixed in in commercially produced hand salves and creams and things. It's great for soothing eczema, for soothing dry skin. It's got anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiseptic properties. So it's gonna be great all-purpose hand healer. You can optionally add some other essential oils that have great skin benefits to this recipe as well, and I'll give you some options for that. But let's get started making our hand salve. So first I wanna show you how you can infuse calendula into coconut oil. So to infuse your calendula into coconut oil, you'll need to take your dried calendula flowers, and you'll wanna put them in a jar and fill the jar about three quarters of the way full. Then I'm gonna take my coconut oil, this is regular coconut oil that I that's solid at room temperature that I've just melted in the microwave. And I'm gonna fill the jar so we leave about an inch or so of headspace at the top like that. And then you'll just kind of wanna take a chopstick or something, poke them down so that they're all submerged into the oil. Now you'll wanna turn your crock pot onto the warm setting. This is going to keep it at a low enough temperature that you're not going to burn your herbs or your, in this case, your calendula. So we'll turn to the warm setting. And I like to lay a little dishcloth down in the bottom just to keep the jar from, from banging around. And we're gonna fill it with some water. I'm gonna place the lid on my mason jar and set it into the water. And if you need to add a little bit more water to your crock pot to bring the level up, you can do that, but you don't want the water to go above your, your jar lid, like that. So good, that looks pretty good. And we'll leave the lid off of this, and I'm gonna leave this overnight. So my calendula, have been sitting overnight in this crock pot. Occasionally, if you walk by, you can shake your jar, get it a little mixed up in there, and you're gonna wanna keep this water about 99 degrees or so. You don't wanna fry your herbs, it's just a gentle heat. So I've got mine, you see, it's been set it warm. It's been about uh, 12, 14 hours or so that this has been in here. Now we're going to strain the oil out of the jar. So I have set up here, big clean bowl, I've got a strainer like this. You can use cheesecloth. I don't happen to have any right now, so I'm going to be using a coffee filter. And we'll place it in there just like this. Now we'll simply pour our oil into our prepared filter. And let it drip down in there. And we'll squeeze out the flowers as best we can. Pretty simple. And so I'll just pour my oil here into a clean jar 
for storage. You'll want to store it in a cool, dark place, and this should last you quite some time. Now we're going to make our hand sap. You've got your infused oil, and we're going to be mixing it with some beeswax. For this recipe, we're going to be using a half an ounce of beeswax. I like to use these little pellets because they just melt a bit faster. And we're going to be using two ounces of our infused coconut oil. I like to measure mine with a little kitchen scale like this just because I think it's a bit easier. But this is going to be the equivalent of about two tablespoons of beeswax pellets and about four tablespoons of your infused oil. You can tweak this ratio depending on your personal preferences. If you would like this to be a bit firmer, you can increase your proportion of beeswax. If you'd like it to be a bit on the softer side, you can decrease it a bit. It's kind of up to you. In order to melt this, I like to use a double boiler system. So I've got a saucepan with a couple inches of water in it, get it warming on the stove here, and a little heat proof bowl. This is where we're gonna melt everything. I like doing it this way because it keeps the temperature from getting too hot. You don't wanna overheat your oil because it might it might destroy some of the beneficial properties of your herbs. So we'll start with our beeswax. Get those guys good and melty. Okay, our beeswax is melted in there, so now we will add our infused calendula oil. Again, this is about four or five tablespoons of this coconut infused oil. Mine's already liquid because we just made it, but yours might be solid. And if you don't want to infuse your calendula into coconut oil, you can absolutely use another infused oil. Olive oil, jojoba oil, sweet almond oil, whatever carrier oil you would like. Once everything is melted together, we are going to carefully take it off of our heat. I always like to wipe the bottom of the bowl with a dish towel because you see it's got some drips here and you don't want any of that water dripping into your salve. This is an oil only product, which means it's going to have a long shelf life. And if you introduce water into that, it will shorten your shelf life. So we have this here. I like to leave my, my pot on a low simmer just in case this starts to, to solidify on me. Beeswax tightens up, hardens up really quickly. So now we can add our essential oils. I'm going to be using a mixture of cedarwood, bergamot, and lavender essential oil. The essential oils in this are completely optional, but these guys have great skin benefits, great for dry skin, good for soothing um, eczema, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, anti all the all the antis really <laughs> so they're great for a skin salve like this one i'm going to keep my delusion for this really low just because i don't want it to be overly fragranced but you could definitely be a bit more heavy-handed than i'm being with these i'm going to add five drops of my cedar wood oil three drops of my bergamot and if you are using bergamot you're going to want to make sure you're using one that says bergeptine free this means that it's been processed so it removes the ingredient in bergamot and some other citrus oils also that cause photosensitivity, which means that it can cause a reaction with your skin and the sun and cause a burn, which is definitely something that you don't want in your hand salve. I'm also gonna use three drops of lavender. Lavender, of course, good for all sorts of things, incredibly skin soothing. So you can use a combination of these, you can use none at all. There are other skin loving essential oils that might be a great choice for you as well. So we'll stir those in together. I just really love the fragrance of this. It's, it's a sort of unisex, lightly woody. I'm actually um, creating this for my dad. So I'm gonna be sending this to my dad for his birthday. So I wanted something that was really gonna be a sort of unisex fragrance. I'm gonna add just a, a drop of vitamin E oil, also optional, but vitamin E oil is an antioxidant, which means it can help slow down the process of rancidity in oil-based recipes like this. It's also really good for soothing the skin. So I will mix that all in there together, and I'm just gonna pour it in my little jar. I'm using a four ounce, mason jar, which is just the right size for this, but you could use any container you want. A little tin, a little jar, 
Just pour it right in there like that. I'm gonna scrape out the extra. And now we just leave this to solidify on the counter. Just leave it for a couple of hours and it'll turn solid. So the consistency of this, let's check it out. This is what it looks like when it's all done. And let's see here. So it's pretty warm in my kitchen. It's got kind of a balmy consistency like this. Oh, I just love, love, love the consistency of this. I can already feel it soaking into my super dry garden hands. So I hope that this helps you to keep your hands protected during these wonderful spring and summer months. If you want more tips and tricks like this DIY recipes, I've got some great stuff coming up for the spring and summer season. So please subscribe. If you've got questions, comments, leave them below. I would love to chat with you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Crunchy ginger. Crunchy.